Simon Jordan doesn't really like Brendan Rodgers and today on Fog Football we're going to look at some comments the TalkSport host made regarding Rodgers as we jabs towards the Celtic board. Welcome back to the channel and he's went clean through him. He's tried to go through him like a hot knife through butter but of course Brendan Rodgers defeated St Mirren 3 now. I'll say Brendan Rodgers defeated St Mirren 3 now. Uh, Brendan Rodgers is Celtic defeated. St Mirren 3 0. Imagine a living Brendan Rogers running around a pitch. That is a sight to behold. Um, but yeah, he made his feelings quite public on his uh, his opinion on the transfer strategy that needs ripped up and written out and all that good stuff. Now, I mean, pretty much ever since the weekend, Celtic have been linked with every player, bids coming in, money being splashed, players being sold, yada yada yada. But talk sport host. Jordan, Simon Jordan, has questioned what has been said privately between Rodgers and the board. He's accused the Irishman of taking all the credit for the self proclaimed good place the team is in, and if the board are holding up their end of the bargain in terms of transfers, then he should walk away. He's, he's, he's accused the Irishman? Last time I checked, brother, Brendan was born in the north. Born in Northern Ireland there, fella. Come on, Brendan Rodgers, I'm pretty sure he was born... I can't remember the name of the place because it's got a really small population. So he's big Brendan whipping out the Gucci belt in front of like five people. Is that how he was born? I don't know. Anyway, I'm talking men, so let's talk about um let's talk about what Simon Jordan actually said. He said there is a balance between suggesting that more needs done and going off peace day because he thinks he's a bit clever and start bringing up other aspects how the fan base during COVID decided do not ask for reimbursements for their season tickets. Which is my doing, by the way. This is my doing. This is what I've done. The team is in a good place because this is what I've done. And by the way, now you need to do your bit. What's been discussed with you privately? You feel the team is in an unseeable position because the team is winning, which of course is all down to you and nothing to do with anybody else. But you can say these things that just pushes up against the line. Uh, the flip side of the argument is, He's been told something very different and they're not doing it. Then what does he do? I'm always in the mindset that football managers need to be given the tools. If everyone around you is being strengthened, you're not, then it's not fair. But who's strengthening and improving in the SPFL? Does Celtic, by improving a tad in the Champions League, produce a better outcome? Probably not, because they are not good enough in European football terms. End of quote. Yeah. Um, but I think that is the fine line with Celtic at the minute. It's like, they don't need to spend any money to win the league. They don't. Now... You could spend more money and definitely guarantee the league. I mean, I guess that you know there, there could be a crazy scenario this season where Scott Wright turns into Lionel Messi and you know fires Rangers to title fifty six. But the reality is that's not going to happen. But it could happen. There's a timeline out there where that happens. But this timeline just seems to be hurt and pain and all that shite for Rangers. But yeah, I mean, it's a double edged sword. Celtic don't need to spend the money, but they've got the money to spend, and you know that. The fans, you know, they, they put their money into the club, but reality is Celtic fans put the money into the club, but Celtic have almost got that much money through other revenue sources and transfer sales and Champions League. It's almost like the fucking the fans putting the money in is irrelevant. It, no, like, it does honestly feel like that. And I'm not saying, like, here, fans are irrelevant, but it's like... The discussion that Celtic would make twelve million for Champions League ticket sales, it's like it doesn't really matter though, does it? Yeah, twelve million's nice, but it's like they're fucking near a hundred million in the bank, man. They're selling players, they're bringing in players for cheap. That, that, to me, that's almost irrelevant. That's just my opinion. Uh, it's Simon Jordan went on to say, and I quote: "So I would prefer Brendan Rodgers goes on with the business he can control, or has a conversation with his owners and says, I really don't like what you're doing, so I'm going to leave because." I've got a bit of integrity about me. Rather than spend my time trying to flush you out in the media and doing precisely what suits me best by painting myself as being the all-saving, the all-consuming, all-working well, Brendan Rogers. Well, I agree with that, Simon Jordan, because... Well, I agree with it, but Rogers won't leave. He said he wouldn't leave. He said he would see his contract through, so I guess we're going to take Brendan Rogers' word for it. Uh, they said that stain would come out, to quote... Uh, Dexter Morgan, season three, I believe it was episode 10 on the rooftop with Miguel Prado. Anyway, it doesn't really fucking matter what I'm quoting, does it, folks? Because Brendan Rogers, Brendan, he's threatened the board, he's threatened them, he's threatened their knees on a platter if they don't, if they don't deliver uh, any money. So, ah, yeah, no, he hasn't really. I mean, uh, banter, guys, all right? It's all right to have banter. I'm feeling numb. Rangers are a bit mince. You know, there was a wee bit of positivity at the weekend there, but look, look at this week, man. 
Celtic are fucking getting linked with 5 million here, 8 million there, 10 million there. And Rangers are like, well, we can't sell Hadji and Campbell, so we're snookered. Fucking bleak, man, it really is. Anyway, strap in. It's going to be a crazy week.